Hey, what's up, folks? My man Daryl Jones is a pastor, author, uh, family man, husband, father of seven kids, great leader, uh, great scholar. And the conversation that you're about to listen to is the entire unedited, not even any video work done to it. Uh, just an original vlog that I wanted Daryl to drop some uh, insight on. He dropped more. <laughs> so we put it in this in this conversation, in this video. So here you go. Daryl Jones, ladies and gentlemen. So what up, bro? What's happening, man? It's good to see you always. Likewise, man, dude. First of all, dude, Terry and I, for real, and I ain't just saying this because we recording right now, dude, but dude, we really been talking about just how refreshing it was to hang around y'all, bro. Just, I missed that, dude. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad. One, I'm so glad to hear that because... Uh, as I was telling you jokingly and truthfully, since we couldn't af afford your normal rate, <laughs> we were like, we going to sell it. We're going to sell it with just a fun time. You and the wife here in Miami, y'all can spend some time on the beach and we can love on y'all. So I'm so glad that y'all had a good time here in South Florida with us, man. Dude, I forgot, dude, I forgot to tell you, dude, my foot was jacked up that next day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, <laughs> funny is, we were sore. My uh, my heels, both my heels were kind of sore. Yeah, my feet hurt. Not like oh, <laughs> oh, that, that that two mile walk on the beach and then that two mile walk back. <laughs> yeah, at twelve thirty in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, so dude, tell us real quick, man, about man how God sent y'all to how y'all got to to Miami, dude. Hey, uh, I had no intention of ever moving back to Miami. I had no intention of church planting. And uh, one day, uh, you know, for, for you know, for, for the for those watching, we have seven children. Well, when my wife was pregnant with number six, she asked me one morning, first conversation, are we ever moving back to Miami? Uh, the short and sweet of it, I told her never. I said, unless the Lord calls us for ministry. <laughs> I said, look, you pray, you tell the Lord, tell me, we'll see what the Lord does. And seven days later, that's what got my attention with the number seven. Yeah. Seven days later, I got a call about church planting in Miami. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. But I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up, time out. Hold on, where is this? Seven days ago, my wife asked me, seven days later, I get a call about church planting in Miami. What are you doing, Lord? And uh, oh, no. got, got more information about it. And uh, was like, nah, I'm not the guy. Uh, I don't want to do that. Sounds great. I I'm praying for Miami, but I'm not the guy. And for the next year, God <laughs> will let us shake it. Uh, every, every single part of our life, God made clear, he was calling us to move back. And so we put our house up for sale. We didn't know where we were going to live. Right. We didn't know exactly where the church was. All we knew was kind of like Genesis 12 when God told Abram, like, look, leave your land, you know, leave your father's house, go to the land. I will show you. That That's part of my testimony. Now, I, all we knew was God was telling us to come to this area and he would unpack the rest as we were faithful. So uh, it's, it's been a pretty amazing. Yo, so most people, uh, most, most people know what, well, when they think Miami, the last thing they think is church. <laughs> Matter of fact, it ain't even last. That's not even consideration. Yeah. Not even consideration. <laughs> Jesus, church? No, no. Right. No. <laughs> no. So, dude, what's like? What's going on? What do people need to know that that they don't know about Miami? Like, help us. I really want everybody listening to man. I I want y'all to hear just kind of what's going on because it's our responsibility as followers of Christ to impact every area of the globe. Yes. Particularly yes. If, if at the least with your prayers, yeah. but then yeah. maybe it's your financial support. Maybe it's just your encouragement. Just yeah. saying, yo, I see what y'all doing. Keep it going. So dude, tell us. Yeah, man. Yeah. Tell us what we need to know about Miami. So uh, as we just said, when, when, when you say Miami, nobody thinks about, you're not thinking about Jesus. You're not thinking about church. You're not thinking about discipleship. Uh, Miami is it's kind of known for its flair. Uh, I'm gonna use a big word. It's, it's hedonism. It's, it's where you go to have fun. It's, it's yeah. pleasure. You come here to have pleasure. You know, um, you know, in, in the 80s and 90s, you know, it was the scene for basically where almost all of America's drug trade was coming yeah. in. You know I mean, <laughs> that's, that's where we got the popular shows, Miami Vice and Bad yeah. Boys, party scene, the clubs, all of that kind of thing. And um, in the in the sports town element of it too. So with the tourism, so you have all that going on. So like I like to tell people, me being originally from Dallas, 
My wife is from Miami. I joke and I say, Miami is not the Bible Belt. It is not <laughs> the Bible Belt. And in a lot of ways, I jokingly say this, but I, I'm, there's something I mean by this when I say this. It's almost not America. It's not the norm wow. of what America is. It's uh, And then some people think it's a melting pot. It's not even really that. You have so many different people groups. And a lot of times they kind of do their own thing. But then even within that, there's this South Florida subculture too. So it's real interesting when you're trying to build relationships because uh, because there's so many different kinds of people. It's hard to build trust. It's hard yeah. to build relationships. But when you do, you're family. You know, I, yeah. I, I have people, you know, about a, about a third of our church is Hispanic, mostly Caribbean Hispanic countries. Some, the others, uh, South America. And uh, for, for them, I'm, I'm family. I can go to any of their family events. I get a big old pastor plate. You know, they, they, they love me. But that, that takes time. I mean, it yeah. takes time because there's so many different kinds of people. And a lot of ways, it's kind of segregated off people kind of in their own little areas. And you do your thing, you know, and you drive over here. It feels like you're in this country. You go over, you drive over here. It feels like you're in Jamaica. It's Jamaican flags, Jamaican food, Jamaican music. You, you cross over here. It's like you're in Cuba. It's Cuban fuel, food. You know, right. like I joke. You go in Little Havana, I don't think they still have a Starbucks because Starbucks not allowed. You drink Cuban really? coffee. You know, like it's you know, you it's, it's different elements to it. And and so when you go around, you you feel that. And but then two, because of like I said, but not two, I don't lost where the number is, but when you're talking about um the type of scene it is down here, um, we're also at the top of the list when it comes to uh, I guess you may call it white collar crime. So Ponzi schemes and insurance fraud and real estate fraud. And so all these different kinds of fraud. So nobody trusts anybody. Oh. So when you start walking up to people trying to talk to them and me bringing my Southern hospitality, they looking at me like, what kind of angle I'm working? Like, you know, <laughs> looking at me sideways. Like nobody's smiling like that. Right. Like, you know, I know you got to hustle somewhere with you. Nice. Like what are you trying to hustle? <laughs> and, 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 it, and I keep saying it, it takes time. But um, with that, because of all those elements, I love it. I can't imagine doing ministry anywhere else because there are some authentic conversations. Yeah. And this is why. This is why. Biblical illiteracy is high all over the country. Right. It's more so in South Florida. Mm. Uh, I tell people like God hadn't left himself without a witness. So we got soldiers for Christ down here and they've been doing the work for a long time and we need more. When you look at the sheer population, of people, and just in Miami Day, roughly almost three million people. Some studies say from three to five percent profess to be Bible believing followers of Jesus Christ. So, not a question: Are you a Christian? I'm yeah. saying, are you a Bible believing follower of Jesus Christ? Three to five percent. So, if you say three to five percent of three million, that's not a lot right. of people committed to Christ. <laughs> like, so, who are you again? Yeah, like, yeah. What y'all believe? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so when you come in, but then this this is where the kicker is because biblical literacy is so high they don't they they don't know what the bible says they don't know who these people are wow. so when you start having these conversations or showing them something in the scripture i have had so many times people be like i never knew the bible talked about that give, an, give, me that give me an example give me an example hey um I, I i i give an example when it's start talking about husband and wife and relationships yeah and 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 even intimacy within husband and wife when we went into first corinthians chapter seven brother looked at me and said man don't the bible talk about that <laughs> like is that what what i said is it flipped the script because first corinthians seven is about us selflessly giving ourselves to our spouse wives selflessly giving themselves to their husbands husbands selflessly given to your wife versus yeah. get 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 i get me and it's like right. it's a total paradigm shift and so uh matter of fact I, I had a pastor tell me one time he said he said man you can walk that 10 people eight or nine of them will not know who paul is if you say you know saul who became the apostle paul yeah. and i have found that to be true you you say these names you know so i've even changed my teaching and my preaching i, I can't just in pass and say you know when joe was talking to the three friends they don't know yeah. who that is so you got to unpack that a little bit. And I love it, bro. I, brother, I love it. I love it because we can do some authentic, deep dives and to see when those light bulbs go off, to see that when that commitment to Christ, when that, when that truth hits and they they submit and commit to Jesus, man, I it's nothing like it, man. I love it. No doubt. And like there's another group of people that that you've you've done some stuff for. 
and that that that's a group of people that's probably unfair all of us is probably more like it when when tough stuff happens in our lives and tragedy happens and we don't really understand why that stuff happens yeah yeah help us out doc what what, what you do man hey man so it I, I wrote a book god laid a book on my heart called why lord why finding hope in a world to hurt and uh it stemmed from a number of conversations with people at the church or even kind of connected. They weren't members, but may have visited and had questions. And it was questions with dealing with these tough times in life. And yeah. you know, why Why would God allow this to happen if we talk about a good God? Um, you know, wh why did this happen? And then even if it went in their own life, you know, something they saw on TV that seemed just some kind of gratuitous evil, like why would God allow that to happen? And it really struck a chord where I put in the book, somebody had submitted a question. We do this time called questions for pastor where people submit questions they're thinking about. And I answer them anonymously on a particular Sunday. And they submitted the question and said, where was God doing slavery? And my response was like, initially, like, which slavery are we talking about? Are we talking about Egyptian slavery? Are we talking about Babylonian slavery? Hittite, right. and actually, are we talking about, I said, are we talking about uh, Babylonian uh, Medo-Persian slavery, are we talking about the trans-Saharan slave trade, are we talking about just the transatlantic slave trade, or are we right. talking about the current slave trade right now with the sex trafficking all over the world, and particularly even now in the U.S., which slavery are we talking about? Yeah. And then I said, really what we're asking is, where is God doing suffering? Right. And so I answered that from a biblical perspective, and I said, you know what, uh, I think I need to unpack this, and my wife and one of my ministers at the church said, Pastor, I think you need to go on and write on this, and so uh, we had it ready and the manuscript was done and then the COVID shutdown hit and they were like, you got to get it out because people hurt and people struggle right. for answers. And what I wanted to do was that was a little unique about that book. And you see it uh, actually over this shoulder right here. Uh, I'm gonna grab it. Um, this what, what 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 the reason I did is I wanted it a certain length where you can put it in your back pocket. Yeah. Uh, but then. A lot of books are either heavily philosophical arguing for the existence of God, or it's a lot of testimonies right. about God, how God brought people out. What I wanted particularly with this book was I want us to look at what has God said, particularly in these issues in scripture. And I want to point people to the scripture so that they can always go back to it and not just, you know, hear a message from me or anything like that. So this is a book that's kind of like a resource and each chapter ends with discussion questions. You can do it with other people, small groups. And uh, man, the feedback has been great. Uh, the testimonials, people have reached out on Facebook Messenger. Uh, how has this blessed them? You know, I got one, one lady sent a message and she made a comment that, you know, a couple of years ago, her husband had gotten murdered. And they had three kids. Man, she was a full-time nurse. So she's in the midst of COVID and she's just feeling everything. Yeah. And she was like, she got this book and it just helped her in such an amazing way from her perspective. And it built her confidence in the Lord and the Lord's hand on her life. So I said, well, hey, if I just wrote it just for her, praise right. the Lord. You know, so it's, it's been a blessing. No doubt. And then, dude, you've seen, you like, not only, you've experienced just a well-rounded, uh childhood young adult life dude being in dallas being the the athlete that you are then going i don't know if it's r or were <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know then going to miami being yeah. on the, the miami squad yeah and then having been a youth pastor and then be, having six kids of your own so clearly seven seven seven, seven, seven. seven. Yeah, my bad my bad my bad my bad <laughs> I don't want to discount you, dog. Hey, discount it. <laughs> hey, hey, the, the government don't let me discount this. I know that's right. <laughs> the, grocery, the grocery store don't let me discount. <laughs> that's funny, but then also, dude, like like you said about being in Miami, you get you get you get a sense of realness. Like parents are gonna be real with you yeah. about where their teenagers are. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna, you know, people are gonna be real with the teenagers gonna be real. So mm -hmm. you got that book back there, Youth Matters, or yeah. Youth Matter. I, I didn't mean to put the S on it. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Youth Matter. And, um, you know, we always put S's on stuff like that. We, you we know, always do. We know. always do. <laughs> but uh, Youth Matter, Kingdom Development, Kingdom Impact. And, man, this this is my baby. You know, yeah. 11 years of youth ministry, uh, I was looking for this book, you know, for uh, youth leaders that I had, um, for uh, small groups. And while there were a lot of materials, I, I was looking for certain things from a discipleship standpoint that uh, I think were some key areas that need to be discussed. And 
uh, I had some mentors and pastors say, hey, you keep talking about it. Why don't you write it? Yeah. And so uh, here, here it is. And I say this is my baby, like 11 years of youth ministry, um, um, seven of my own children. I was like, this is the book every parent wants their youth to read middle school and high school. This is the book every pastor wants every family to have in their church. And so, uh, and again, the, the feedback here has been phenomenal. And um, I'm looking for this just to, I, I just want this to be a blessing. And again, this, this is another resource. And just like the other one, each chapter ends with some discussion questions, uh, some self yeah. so whether individually or, you know, small groups or a family, like family discussion, you know, right. uh, and, and one thing that's been encouraging, I've had parents be like, they're like, bro, this thing was for me. I thought it was for my kid. <laughs> And she's like, I think all the chapters were for me, you know, right. and I, hey, it's something that when, when you're dealing with the word of God, it, it, it never returns void. And so uh, I'm just grateful that that the Lord allowed me to do it. I if you'd have told me a few years ago, I'd be writing books. I'd have laughed in your face. Uh, that is I can talk all day. Writing is a whole different kind of a craft. And yet, uh, Lord has seen fit to, to use me in that capacity. So I'm, I'm grateful, man. Yo, I'm grateful. What, but I say whatever on that, dude, because you almost like <laughs> you, you, you almost done with your PhD studies, brother. Yeah, but it's, You're it's a bona fide writer, dude. <laughs> I, I can't deny it anymore. I am a writer now. You know, yeah. I have like as of right now, this is September 2021. I have submitted my my full dissertation. So I'm praying for Whoa eyes and we but we still in the process we have not reached the finish line yet yeah so, uh, pray for me pray for me on that and uh That's but true. yeah i i am a writer now uh but it's it's a little it's tougher for me it doesn't come as naturally as me running my mouth i say right. that <laughs> good stuff dude and man again dude man so encouraged about what was going on down there in miami dude that rock fellowship and just with you bro no i appreciate it man i appreciate the love of my our people still Talking about you, man. Uh, you were such a blessing. You and your wife. Uh, it's a blessing for our couples. You know, now yeah. you got the whole, you got all the married folk talking about working on something now. You know, you got it. <laughs> you got like that's like the running joke now, you know, to everybody. Oh, that's funny, man. Using. And uh, and I'm so glad. You don't know how much uh how thankful I am that you came down and you allowed the Lord to 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 use the gifting and the talents and the skill and experiences that you have. Yeah. To be listen down here, man. And I'm looking for even more. You know, I'm looking for even more, more to come. And uh we'll see how the Lord keeps leading. Like we I, you hear me say, we're gonna be faithful. We're just gonna be okay. faithful. And um, you know, we we're gonna allow the Lord to lead us. We're gonna we gonna stay on the wall. Like the old, like the old preachers used to say with Nehemiah, we're gonna stay on the wall. Yes, sir. This phrase can be taken different, especially down in Miami, but I say don't stop, get it, get it. Don't bro. stop, get it, get it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. From 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 the prophet Luke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey yo, how, how did how did the um how did the marriage deal go? That was last week, oh, right? Man, yeah. So we we had a blast. We I prayed. I was praying for a minimum of ten couples to go on the marriage yeah. retreat. It's our first. It's our inaugural our inaugural marriage retreat. I've uh, been want, wanting to do it for the last two years. Just haven't been able to make it happen. And uh, for, like coming to the wire, we only had four couples signed up. And I was like, Lord, I know you laid this on my heart. Yeah. I'm passionate about. It. I'm praying for it. And uh, we ended up with a total of 12 couples, brother, and they loved it. They loved it. They didn't know what to expect. They were sweating like, what are we doing? What are we doing? I'm like, look, just come. It's going to be a relaxing, fun evening overnight. Don't sweat it, you know. And we we and I kept things simple because I wanted it to be really a time alone. Right. With husbands and wives, get a babysitter, get away from the hustle and bustle, get away from the pressures and really spend some focused time with one another. And so we got, God bless us, man. We had an embassy suites right on the beach, right on the water. You walk out the back, you walk onto the sand. Uh, we, we, uh, we had a dinner. I set up a dinner. Like you can check in early, yeah. come, hang out on the beach. Dinner time was at seven. Uh, we played a little, little couples game, had fun with that. Uh, I gave a little 15, 20 minute word message to really build up the couples and God's will and, and passion for their marriages. And uh, and it was just time to get to know and then we break out like the evening is yours. Whatever y'all want to do. Y'all want to walk on the beach at night. Y'all want to go go get some ice cream somewhere. You want to hang in the room, whatever you want to do. It's up to you. And then they had, we had breakfast in the morning on you. Or if you want to sit with each other yeah. on the beach, 
And so uh, everybody, everybody loved it, man. Uh, great conversation. And uh, the consensus was, we doing this every year, right, Pastor? Like, we do it every year. I'm like, well, I guess so. I guess so. I guess we're going to do it. So I'm, I'm glad, and I, and, I, and I hope to continue to keep the momentum and, and grow it. You know, I, I want to double the couples. You know, God willing, I want to double the couples next year. And we can continue to just be 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 a blessing and really build up our our marriages because you know if we if we can get some strong marriages in Christ, uh, that just makes the family stronger, that makes the church stronger, that makes the community stronger, and so forth and so on. So we gonna Boom. so anybody anybody who watching this, just know you can book a trip to Miami. Hey, be on the hey. beach and Come have on. you know with your boo, Come <laughs> if y'all married, that is. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is I I had some questions about that. I was like, look, <laughs> look. Y'all know who we are. You you know who your pastor is. This is a marriage retreat. Yeah. And I'm not ashamed about that. You know, when Jesus talks about marriage, he talks about male and female. So, you know, if you want to have another kind of retreat, hey, go do that. That's that's on you. Go. No doubt. Go do what you want to do. But for, yeah. this, for this one, this is what it's going to be. And, and we, we, I even had a question, you know, somebody had reached out because it was a few, it was a few, it was a few couples that weren't members of our church. You know, they were yeah. friends, kind of connected. And one of the husbands reached out and was like, kind of like asking me questions because his his wife wasn't as, you know, let's say churchy, you know, and he was asking kind of what it is. And I said, look, this is what the this is what the retreat is. This is what we're going to be doing. We're not ashamed about that. I would love for y'all to come. And right. uh, that particular couple, man, uh, we can we've been talking to them even more now. Wow. That closer with me and my wife and we seeing fruit from that already. Yeah. Banging. Yeah. Yeah. But always a champion. Daryl Jones, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Yo, uh, so y'all be in contact with him. Follow him on social media. Yeah, yeah. Website. yeah. And and my uh my name, DarylJones.org, D-A-R-Y-L Jones.org, D-A-R-Y-L-J-O-N-E-S dot org. You can follow everything right there as well. Boom. <laughs>